All right, now it's time to implement looping in Python. So in the previous video, we have done it in Java and now let's do it in Python. So firstly, let's start with for loop and then we'll uh, talk about the while loop. So uh, for loop in Java, sorry, in Python, first of all, let me actually save this file so that we get the indentation and stuff. So let me save this as looping.py. Right, so for i in range of 0 to 10 so basically let's make it as 1 to 10 right so basically this is how you uh, start a for loop in python so you say use the word uh, use the keyword for and then you say for i in range 1 to 10 so we have already uh, discussed about what this range function is and what it does so then you do a colon and then uh, indentation now everything that you write in this particular indentation will be will come under this for loop right so let's print out print looping right uh, let's print out looping and then actually you know what let's print out looping for i equal to and then let's actually you know let's actually say i right there so that you know we get the value of i for each and every time this loop is being iterated right so yeah let's actually go ahead and uh, run this thing let's say python looping dot pi okay it says cannot can only concatenate str so this is basically uh, the error if you can read here it says can only concatenate str to str not integer so this is an integer data type and this as we know is a string so it basically says we cannot concatenate an integer to a string so in order to fix this you could just say percentage d percentage d is basically a format specifier so when you actually run the program this percentage d will not be printed to the screen uh, this percentage d basically is used as a format specifier which means we are basically telling the computer to print some value in the place of his percentage d so what value we want to be printed in this percentage d we have to actually uh, define it here you can say percentage and then you can define the value which you want to print i want i to be printed in this in the place of percentage d so i'll say percentage of i and uh, if you are doing it for a string you have to do percentage s if you are doing it for float you have to do percentage f if you are doing it uh, for other data types it, it varies for every data type but for integer it is percentage d right and this is a this is quite a new concept because we have not spoken about format specifiers until now but this is a very simple idea basically so whenever you do a format specifier like this you are basically telling your computer to print some value uh, in the place of this format specifier and you define that value by saying percentage followed by the value which you want to print in the place of the format specifier and also you have to uh, look carefully for the data types since this is uh, since i is an integer data type i'm using percentage d if it's a float i will use percentage f right so yeah anyways let's actually go ahead and run this this time and there you go it says looping looping it says looping for uh, actually 10 9 times so it is actually executing for 9 times right so for i equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so basically uh, what we can understand or what we can make of this output is that the end value will not be considered so if you want to actually one, if you want to if you want to actually iterate this loop for 10 times you have to actually use 11 here because the end value will not be considered so if you use 11 here 11 will not be considered and it will be executed only until 10 right so i hope you get the idea so if i change this to 11 this time it will be executed for i equal to 1 to i equal to 10 right so yeah uh, that's about uh, that's about a for loop in python and also remember this is not the only way in python uh, to start a for loop you don't need to use a range statement you can uh, start a for loop in other ways as well but uh, we will be looking about looking into how to do that uh, in the practical exercise but for now most commonly we do use a for loop with the range function but this is not the only way there are other ways as well which we will be looking uh, when it comes to uh, the practical exercise right 
So wait for it. Now that's all about the for loop and what if you want to actually, you know, so that's all about the for loop. Let's go ahead and look at the while loop now. And in Python, to do a while loop, you say while followed by open, open close brackets. And then you mention the condition here. So you can say i less than or equal to 10. And then uh, a colon followed by indentation. And you can say print looping. And once again, let's print the value of i as well. So say looping for i equal to mod d. And then you can print mod i right there. And also you have to initialize the value of i because we are using the value of i. So initially there must be some value assigned to i. Only then this will work, right? So basically this will be executed for uh, infinite number of times because as you could see in this while loop we are just, we have a condition but we are not actually making any changes to this variable i, right? So in order to fix this you can say i equal to i plus 1 so every time the i value will be incremented by 1. So let's clear the screen and let's uh, run this again, python looping.py. And there you go, it is actually executing for 10 times. And if you just take off this updation statement, if you just uh, don't update the value of i, you can see that it is an infinite loop here because there is no, nothing actually is done or no changes are actually done to the variable i so it will stay the same forever so that's why there's an infinite loop right there so in order to uh, terminate this once again you can hold ctrl c and that will terminate the program your python program so i guess that's all that's all about uh, looping uh, there is a lot more you can do with looping in python and uh, in java you can there are different ways to implement looping but this is the most basic way and uh, the different the other different ways to implement looping in these programming languages uh, we will be looking at them in the in the upcoming video lessons which are the practical video lessons where we'll be actually trying to write a program for a given question or for a given scenario or to solve a particular problem right so yeah let's move on to the practical exercises